Hello and welcome to the special edition of the Homeland Security Report. I'm Tony Christopher. Israel's Ballistic Missile Defense Israel's primary ballistic missile defense is the Arrow. While the Arrow 2 has been operational for some years, the Arrow 3 is still under development, with entry into operational service expected in 2017. The follow-up program was launched in 2008 with the goal of testing the Arrow 3 interceptor missile within three to four years. No definite timetable has been openly disclosed to date. In parallel, the U.S. deployed to Israel one of its extremely capable Raytheon TPY-2 radars on a semi-permanent basis. A more powerful version of Israel's indigenous Green Pine radar has been developed and tested. The first tests of an airborne infrared optical detection system showed good promise. At the same time, the U.S. increased its investments in the ground-based SM-3 system and reset its deployability goal to 2015. It remains to be seen which of the two systems will win this race. Some tests failed and others prove only partially successful. Nevertheless, this is a normal situation in such state-of-the-art systems. The Arrow weapon system consists of a large modern phase array radar, a battle management center, and a two-stage interceptor missile launched from a relatively simple multi-barrel launcher. The missile is equipped with an infrared homing kill vehicle comprising a powerful warhead that sends a focused beam of heavy fragments at the target. This large number of heavy tungsten fragments is sufficient to shred any type of hostile warhead to pieces, be it nuclear, chemical, or explosive. The Arrow 3's very high exo-atmospheric interception altitudes, coupled with the improved detection, discrimination, and fire control, is designed to permit observed fire, that is shoot, look, shoot, in air and missile defense parlance, thus providing at least two and possibly three chances to kill each incoming missile. The new architecture will thus assure a very high probability of kill against any suspected nuclear missile, as well as being capable of handling larger salvos of longer range ballistic missiles equipped with countermeasures. The Arrow 3 is also developed by Israel Aerospace Industries, but this time in cooperation with Boeing. In the meantime, Israel is upgrading the Arrow 2. The ballistic missile simulation is being performed by the blue and silver Sparrow targets made by Rafael and launched from an F-15 combat aircraft. The civil war in Syria and extreme Islamic organizations that control parts of this country pose a big problem for the IAF. To avoid any attempt to use the unclear and fast-changing situation in Syria, the IAF has been taking measures that can be summed up in zero-time reaction. During the conflict, the Syrian regime has used Scud surface surface missiles against the rebels, mainly Scuds. This allowed the IAF to gather precious information about the way these missiles fly to the target. Colonel Aviram Hasson, head of the higher tier department in the Israel Missile Defense Organization, said that the Syrian regime gave us a treasure of information about the way the surface surface missiles are being prepared for launch and about their flight to target. We have completely changed the Arrow anti-ballistic system following this information we gathered. The operational Arrow 2 is constantly being upgraded. Nevertheless, the real-time data gathered by staring into Syria enabled a more precise and accelerated process. The two Arrow versions will operate in parallel to David Sling long-range rockets interceptor being developed by Raphael and Raytheon. The command and control system of this advanced weapon system is being developed by Elisra, an Elbit system subsidiary. In August 2013, Raytheon and Raphael Advanced Defense Systems began to seek funding for a fourth generation Patriot intercepting system called the Patriot Advanced Affordable Capability 4. The system aims to integrate the Stunner Interceptor from the jointly funded David Sling program with Patriot's PAC-3 radars, launchers, and engagement control stations. And that's it for this week. Thank you for watching this special edition of The Report. See you at the same time, same place next week. And for further information, click the link below.